What's up guys, welcome back to another Revit Tools video. Have you ever had all or some of your model elements randomly deleted? You don't know what happened, you showed up one morning and bam, just poof, they're gone out of nowhere. Yeah, it's happened to me, it's happened to most people. I've got one solution for you, it's going to be the pin tool. I can't necessarily save things from getting deleted, I can't necessarily help you in that way. But what I can do is maybe help reduce that with the pen tool. So let's get into the pen tool. It's a pretty quick tutorial. I've got a basic looking building here that has, it's just a basic layout. There's nothing too special to it. It's just a bunch of different things thrown together to show you how the pen tool works. And by pen, I mean P-I-N. If you look up here, you'll see a pen with an X and a pen, like a you're gonna pin something to the wall or pin a sticky note to the wall. So, there's not a whole lot to this tool. It simply locks a model element in place as you can see right there. So what that's gonna allow us to do is keep that element from being deleted. It basically allows you to not have things be able to be selected and just freely deleted. It's, it's kind of a safeguard from immediate deleted. <laughs> you're not necessarily out of the woods when it comes to elements being deleted but the pen tool will certainly help so let's get right into it when I when I first click the pen tool I'm not really prompted to do anything except select an element that I want to pin and like I said before the the pen tool is going to pin an element down and let's say I want to pin this wall I'm gonna select that wall hit enter and now you can see that there's that pin icon as in press down you can kind of see that there's no pointer to the pin tool there so that tells you that that element is actually pinned and not just free floating so if I want to unpin it I can select the element I can see that it is pinned and then I can hit that button there and now you can see that the pin with the X is now there and that tells you that the element is no longer pinned. And whenever I select it again, there I can have I can choose to toggle back. So after I hit escape, boom, I can still go back and pin that element, which is really nice. And if you hover over that, you can see the tooltip says prevent or allow change of element position. So preventing would keeping would you prevent the element from being affected or changed if you were to keep it pinned and if I were to unpin it that does allow change. So that's real basic. Now, something you won't necessarily get to see is I'm gonna start hitting the delete button. And as soon as I do, you can see down here, it's the, I get a warning that says, pinned objects were not deleted. To delete them, you must unpin them. Well, that's exactly what the tool is. That's exactly what the tool is used for. And that's why I would urge everyone to use the tool. Now, I'm not saying you should select absolutely everything and then click the pen tool to pin everything because the second anyone needs to update anything at that point, edit anything, they're going to have to unpin it. So I would highly recommend the pen tool when it comes to elements that you know are locked down or things that you don't want to move, to move or delete. So in this case, maybe, there, maybe I know these columns are in the perfect place. So I can, another way I can pin is I can select all of them that I would like to pin and then just press the pin tool. You can see now I have pinned all of these elements. And if I try and delete them once again, I get a warning. And that's probably what you want when it comes to that. A lot of times what I'll do is when I've got grids, I'll pin all of these grids once I know these are in place because grids are the type of things that they, you don't want those to move because lots of things are like columns everything like structural bearing walls whatever it might be they're associated to the grid lines whether you have have them actually associated to the grid lines or if you've aligned certain things a lot of elements are dependent on grid line locations so that's why I would want to pin those down and keep them locked down in a good place so again it's not saying you can't delete things if I need to delete this column I can select it unpin it and delete it like it was never pinned to begin with which is it's perfect it, it's a the tool is easy to use it but it allows you from not having to worry about things getting randomly deleted if you know they need to be locked down 
And this works in 3D as well. I'll go to 3D and I'm going to select that column that I know is pinned. You can see it's pinned right there. If I want to pin this wall, I can select the wall, choose the pin tool. Most of the time, I'm not going to actually end up using the unpin tool, but if I select a bunch of objects here and I see that some of them are pinned, some of them are not, if I want to just unpin everything that I know is pinned or everything I want selected to be unpinned, I can just simply select everything regardless of whether they're pinned or not and then just hit unpinned and I know now that there's nothing pinned and I can choose to delete or do whatever I want with all of that. So it, again, it's very simple. There's not a whole lot there. I will show you one example and this is kind of specific, but if you use the out of the box storefront, I'll just put it right here for example. The way the storefront is built, the grid lines actually come in pinned, and that's true for, all, for also the mullions. And this is so things aren't easy to drag around or move, and so you're, you're basically just affecting the wall and pushing and pulling the, the storefront wall itself. So that's just something to know that storefront walls come in that way, their grid lines come in pinned, the mullions come in pinned, and so if you want to affect or change that, you'll first have to select the mullion, unpin it, and then you can actually change. Because if I come to this mullion and I see that it's pinned, I also, I can't change the type. You essentially can't do anything to an element that's pinned until it's unpinned, hence not being able to edit or delete. Which again is very nice. So a lot of times you'll select an element and notice that it's, you can't do anything. You try and move it or do whatever, but that's probably because it's pinned. And there's a nice icon that comes up and you can just simply hit unpin. So that's that's the pin tool in a nutshell, but there's one more thing I want to show you about pinning. And this is such an underutilized option in Revit. If you look down at the bottom right, there's a few different icons over here. One of them, and I'll go over these uh, in a different video in a future time, but one of them specifically has a pin on it and it says select pinned elements. So basically allows you to select pinned elements or not. So I'm going to, I'll select these walls and then those columns and I will pin them. So I know that everything that has to do with these walls and columns are pinned. And at this point, maybe I wanna lock this down one step farther. I know that these walls are not moving, they shouldn't move and I don't wanna to touch them or even accidentally move them or anything at all. So one thing I can do is come down here and click this select pinned elements button. So by default, you're not gonna see an X. Like by some of these, you see an X. You're not going to see an X next to this pinned because right now you have the option to select pinned elements because you probably want to be able to do that generally. But I've also seen some people operate with this button toggle. So if I click that, you can see there's an X there, which means I no longer can select pinned elements. So now if I hover over any of these elements that I know are pinned, I can't select them at all. And even if I swipe over, I can't. There's no selecting. There's absolutely nothing I can do to those elements. Same within 3D. I, I can't affect those elements at all. I can't even begin to select them. So there are a lot of times where you might get confused that you can't select an element or do anything like that. And maybe it's pinned and this button's turned on. So again, that's very simple. There's not a whole lot to, to do except for having the knowledge that you have this ability to select pinned elements or not. A lot of times I, I'll just keep this off so I can still select pinned elements and have the flexibility of being able to edit them if I need to. But if you know you're prone to move things or delete things by accident or anything like that, or, or even if you're still learning, you can easily pin elements down and then select that button and you're not going to end up breaking them or moving them or doing anything that might impact the model because those elements are pinned. That was kind of long-winded when it comes to pin elements and pinning elements and using the pin tool, but it's okay. I sure hope you learned something today. If you did, if you would leave me a like, it sure does help. Also subscribe if, you're, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it. There's definitely more coming on the way. 
If you have any comments, feel free to leave those below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I hope you have a wonderful day and thanks for watching.